And he says, how is the second floor built? And are there any kits available since I do not see the second floor materials included with any of the dome kit parts? Now, his plan is to build a 49 foot dome that we built in Queensland, Australia. But this is about the main factor holding me back from choosing natural spaces over timberline. So we know all the other dome companies out there. We know all the dome companies that have folded, that have I shouldn't just say folded, that have uh, ceased to exist for whatever reasons. Um, the owner died or they sold it or something. We know the types of domes that are out there being built. We have our own system. My background is architecture. Uh, that's where we got into this back in the 70s. And I quit the architectural firm I worked for and started building domes, but based on architectural facts and figures. So this idea that the second floor in the Timberline Dome is held up by these special brackets that attach to their hub system, it's fine. It's another building system. I often will point out, add up the cost of each of those brackets and then add up the cost of their four by 12 Doug fir beam that goes between the brackets. And then you're gonna put your joists up you still have to use joist hangers. So it's all of these factors, add them up and see what it costs. In 90, I don't know, five, 98% of our domes, we have main floor walls that are holding up the second floor. In the top picture uh, on the left, you see there's framing of this second floor. It's really on the right hand side. It's not really touching any part of that wall. On that upper right-hand photo, you see insulation in those panels with, now these are really old photos. I will tell you that they're from the eighties. When we were doing uh, kind of individual vapor barrier and we weren't really sealing it well, uh, this was everybody building their conventional houses or dome houses that wasn't in the code. You didn't have to do it. We learned our lessons. So nowadays it's different than what you're seeing in the photo, but I'm showing you that we're trying not to break into our dome system now. We're trying to give a continuous air or vapor barrier. So the bottom right picture shows you, there's a couple of walls, it's hard to see, but that one on the right-hand side between the ladder to the right of the ladder, that's a wall going down with studs. On the left-hand side of that, there's some sheetrock leaning up against that wall studs. Those are two main floor walls. And what did we do? We put a beam across the walls and ran some other, we call them rim joists, out to the dome shell. You'll notice we have the interior panels in place. So with that, the vapor barrier is intact. The interior panel is intact. We're not have to cut around something. So this is an easy way to do it. Very inexpensive. There is a um, two photos here that show you a beam that we run into the wall. Um, I'm going to have to say to Tanner, it, the right hand photo is clockwise 90 degrees. I don't know if you can change it while we talk, but uh, maybe you can. That actually is a post. It's not a horizontal post. It's a vertical post. And that dark structure that you see, the dark piece of lumber that you see on the right-hand side, that's the beam that's coming inside of our double strut wall. So with that, you've got a support post in there. And you don't have to worry about too much because it's properly supported. There's no special bracket that we need. There's no um, you know, unusual things you have to have. So it's a very cheap, simple system. And with that, uh, you're gonna have an easier build and certainly a less expensive build Yes, in both of these pictures here, you need to 
cut around. Now, now let's show you what that, Tanner, it's upside down. <laughs> go, go 180 degrees around to the picture. Dennis, you did say clockwise, and I think you meant counterclockwise. Well, I probably meant counterclockwise, you're right. So there it is, now it's in the right position. This is a main four beam holding up the second floor. You see some joists above it. And those joists are resting on top of that beam. But here's this post, uh, double or triple two by four, maybe oh, it might be a two by six. But we have these thick walls. We want the insulation. So we do a high grade two by four on the outside and a lesser grade on the inside. It's still not a stud grade on the inside. We use prime lumber or what's called appearance grade or J grade. So we use a much higher quality lumber on the inside, but it has no bracket on it. It's only there to hold the insulation and to nail the interior panel in place. So at the bottom on the right-hand picture, you see that two by four comes down to a little red spot on it. That's cut. You can cut those two by fours. They're non-supporting. And your interior panel just has to be notched around that beam at the top. You can now insulate that panel, put in the fiberglass, put the vapor barrier on if it's required and continue on putting that interior panel in place. On the right-hand side, there you got the same situation. You're seeing that beam going across. It's uh, temporarily supported on that ladder until the post in the wall gets put in. So it's not just nailed into that plywood on the outside. It's actually gonna be a beam where we cut through this two by four on the inside. We can't cut through the outer strut, but we cut through the inner two by four and run the post down to the floor. Now the floor also has to be designed to accept that extra load for the second floor. That's all part of the total design of the structure. So we plan out that second floor where the beams are, is the beam below the joist or in line with the joists? Uh, are you cantilevering out four feet? We do all these different things in the planning process. So you don't have something that later on you go, well, wait a minute, it's sagging, I need some support. No, that isn't gonna happen. We do have um, registered structural engineer, Paul Durand that does our engineering. Some locations don't require it, but I'm still using his theories, his bases, his, his calculations to figure things out. And in some cases where there's no building inspector, we still on dome say, here, Paul, figure this out. Doesn't matter if the building inspector is not, you want this dome to, to work for you. They want all the structure to work together. So we can have plans stamped in all 50 states. Up in Canada, we do have engineers that we've worked with up in Canada. So that may be required by your local codes and it may not. So where you're building uh, helps tell us what we need to do on a plan. But relating to the second floor, there isn't one second floor that we've done, even in almost identical plans, that's the same. I guess if it's not almost identical, then it wouldn't be the same. Right? Anyway, um, it's a situation where no, we just can't pre-cut it. And if you put a wall in down below and you're an inch off and there's a beam and oh gee, no, it's an inch short. So we don't want that. And it's conventional lumber. Why are we hauling all this conventional lumber that you can buy easily at your local Home Depot Menards, Lowe's, Lumberyard, Independent Lumberyard. Look around, find the best deal. We'll tell you the grade that it has to be, but uh, you know, we'll, we'll help you along the way telling you, as I did today to somebody, I said, you need number one, Doug Fur, if you're gonna cut your own struts. We offer that, we offer a connection hardware system and it's very simple and you can cut your own struts, you can cut your own plywood panels. The plywood panels are three quarter inch TNG underlayment grade plywood. We have specs, we want you to follow those. 
if you choose to sell something else, now we had a customer who said, well, I had a, we got a great deal. This was two years ago. We had a great deal, an inch and a quarter thick plywood, tongue and groove. Remember that, Derek? Yeah, it was cheaper than three quarter inch plywood at the time, yeah, I believe. Right. Yeah, except now when he built it, he said, oh boy, was that backbreaking. Those panels were so heavy at inch and a quarter thick plywood, but he got yeah. it up, it's together. Yeah. He used longer nails, stronger nails, thicker nails. So yeah. it's all of these things that are, are part of it. But certainly you can overkill. You can be, you can, you can, I shouldn't say overkill. You can overbuild this as you should. And I'll say it, I guess the first time this evening, but some of you heard me say it before. If you build to the code and the code will tell you how often you have to nail, you just built the worst house you can build. It's the minimum code. And yet builders will say, oh, look at me, I'm so great. We've all of our houses meet code requirement. Well, that's no big deal. You didn't try very hard. We've exceeded the code since 2000 when the IRC came in. We've exceeded the codes prior to that, BOCA, uh, UBC codes. They're minimum standards. We don't want that. So I think I've answered the questions on the second floor. <laughs> we, we have a better system that's gonna be accommodating to what you can do. You don't need these brackets. They don't work in our system. Their brackets don't work with ours. Our walls are 14, 16, 18 inches thick. And we don't need a structure on the inside of that two by four to hold it together. It's all held up by that outside two by eight. So you'd have to run a bracket all the way back to where that two by eight is. And you're gonna Im really impede that, that uh, insulation and vapor barrier ceiling by doing that. Makes it very hard. <laughs>